February 22nd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Luke chapter 9 from the New Testament. After Jesus called the twelve together, he gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases, and he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He said to them, Take nothing for your journey, no staff, no bag, no bread, no money, and do not take an extra tunic. Whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave the area. Wherever they do not receive you, as you leave the town, shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. Then they departed and went throughout the villages, proclaiming the good news and healing people everywhere. Now Herod, the Tetrarch, heard about everything that was happening, and he was thoroughly perplexed, because some people were saying that John had been raised from the dead, while others were saying that Elijah had appeared, and still others that one of the prophets of long ago had risen. Herod said, I had John beheaded, but who is this about whom I hear such things? So Herod wanted to learn about Jesus. When the apostles returned, they told Jesus everything they had done. Then he took them with him, and they withdrew privately to a town called Bethsaida. But when the crowds found out, they followed him. He welcomed them, spoke to them about the kingdom of God, and cured those who needed healing. Now the day began to draw to a close. So the twelve came and said to Jesus, Send the crowd away so they can go into the surrounding villages and countryside and find lodging and food because we are in an isolated place. But he said to them, You give them something to eat. They replied, We have no more than five loaves and two fish unless we go and buy food for all these people. Now about five thousand men were there. Then he said to his disciples, Have them sit down in groups of about fifty each. So they did as Jesus directed, and the people all sat down. Then he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke them. He gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. They all ate and were satisfied, and what was left over was picked up, twelve baskets of broken pieces. Once when Jesus was praying by himself and his disciples were nearby, he asked them, Who do the crowds say that I am? They answered, John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others that one of the prophets long ago has risen. Then he said to them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered, The Christ of God. But he forcefully commanded them not to tell this to anyone, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and experts in the law, and be killed and on the third day be raised. Then he said to them all, If anyone wants to become my follower, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what does it benefit a person if he gains the whole world, but loses or forfeits himself? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of that person, when he comes in his glory and in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. But I tell you most certainly, there are some standing here who will not experience death before they see the kingdom of God. Now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter, John, and James and went up the mountain to pray. As he was praying, the appearance of his face was transformed and his clothes became very bright, a brilliant white. Then two men, Moses and Elijah, began talking with him. They appeared in glorious splendor and spoke about his departure that he was about to carry out at Jerusalem. Now Peter and those with him were quite sleepy, but as they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. Then as the men were starting to leave, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three shelters, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah not knowing what he was saying. As he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. Then a voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. After the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. So they kept silent and told no one at that time anything of what they had seen. 
Now on the next day, when they had come down from the mountain, a large crowd met him. Then a man from the crowd cried out, Teacher, I beg you to look at my son. He is my only child. A spirit seizes him and he suddenly screams. It throws him into convulsions and causes him to foam at the mouth. It hardly ever leaves him alone, torturing him severely. I begged your disciples to cast it out, but they could not do so. Jesus answered, You unbelieving and perverse generation, how much longer must I be with you and endure you? Bring your son here. As the boy was approaching, the demon threw him to the ground and shook him with convulsions. But Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, healed the boy, and gave him back to his father. Then they were all astonished at the mighty power of God. But while the entire crowd was amazed at everything Jesus was doing, he said to his disciples, Take these words to heart, for the Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of men. But they did not understand this statement. Its meaning had been concealed from them, so they could not grasp it. Yet they were afraid to ask him about this statement. Now an argument started among the disciples as to which of them might be the greatest. But when Jesus discerned their innermost thoughts, he took a child, had him stand up by his side, and said to them, Whoever welcomes this child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. For the one who is least among you all is the one who is great. John answered, Master, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he is not a disciple along with us. But Jesus said to him, do not stop him, for whoever is not against you is for you. Now when the days drew near for him to be taken up, Jesus set out resolutely to go to Jerusalem. He sent messengers on ahead of him. As they went along, they entered a Samaritan village to make things ready in advance for him. But the villagers refused to welcome him because he was determined to go to Jerusalem. Now when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to call fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But Jesus turned and rebuked them, and they went on to another village. As they were walking along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus said to him, Foxes have dens, and the birds in the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Jesus said to another, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Yet another said, I will follow you, Lord. But first let me say goodbye to my family. Jesus said to him, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. God, it, it's interesting. I was just having this discussion with somebody the other day about the, when God calls you, are you ready to give up everything in your life? And what are you holding on to that you would, that would cause you to not be obedient? And as I've already talked about that time in my life where I was still very attached to material things in this world, very attached to relationships in this world, that if you had come to me and said, I need you to go and I need you to um, leave everything behind, leave your friends, leave your family, um, and not ever have comfort again in your life, I would have told you no. There wouldn't have even been a prayer in that. Um, but then you came and, and worked on my heart and worked on my life. And, and now that attachment to material things seems so incredibly foreign to me. That if you called me to Timbuktu tomorrow, um, I would figure out a way to go. There's no attachment in this world that's any greater than the attachment I have for you. And it's hard to get to that point because you keep uh, putting things in my life that test to make sure that I am untethered from anything else. Which is good. I don't mind the testing. <laughs> Uh, but I can see that there's some areas where I'm like, yeah, I'm good to go. And then you'll put something in my life. And I'm like, ooh, not sure if I'm ready to give that up. So today, God, help us figure out what those things are that are holding us, that are giving us roots here in this earthly world. Uh, 
that wouldn't allow us to completely follow you. I'm reading uh, David Platt's book, Follow Me. Thank you for all the amazing words you gave him to put in that book. I really am enjoying it. But it's a hard book to read because it calls us to quit being casual Christians, which I think most of the Christians in this world now are. And in that book, he says, the road that leads to heaven is risky, lonely, and costly in this world, and few are willing to pay that price. You know, there's people in this world, God, that you're asking them to die for their faith. Not just give up TV or <laughs> give up the comforts of being an American or, or even give up some of their relations, including family and, and friends. But you're actually asking people in this world in many cases that if they're going to believe in you and if they head down that road of faith to follow you it's going to result in their death because of where they are in this world and the people who are around them that are fearful of that so here we are in the united states <laughs> such little fear of death having to do with our religion or our relationship with you yet we're still so casual about our Christianity. We're so casual about our relationship with you. We haven't really given, given up anything for that relationship. So at the end of Luke chapter 9, where you said, give up everything to follow me. I don't have a place for my head to rest. It's not going to be comfortable. It's going to be risky. It's going to be very lonely because people are going to think you a tad bit odd. And it's going to be costly because whatever you value in this world, I'm going to make you give those things up in order for me to give you the values of heaven. Hmm. I wonder how many people, God, are really ready to do that. I know even back during the time of your son, obviously it was a struggle for people back then continues to be a struggle now and I think even more so as we've gotten more and more spoiled here in the United States. God, settle into our hearts today and show us these things that we're holding on to, that we're not willing to give up to completely follow you. Show us what that price is that we're going to pay in order to be followers of yours. In order to be true Christians for what you called us to be instead of these casual, lukewarm Christians. You know, you're, you're pretty clear in the Bible that you would prefer us to either be hot or cold. That if we're lukewarm, you're just going to spit us out of your mouth. I fear for the lukewarm Christians of this world for that reason. Not to mention how amazing it is to develop a deeper and deeper and deeper relationship with you and get to learn more and more about you and, and your amazing son. So teach us today, God, what is that price in our life? Because it's going to be different for every single one of us. For some of us, it is going to be relationships. For some of us, for some of us, it is going to be material things. For some of us, it might be financial security. What are the things that you're going to ask us to give up in order to get everything from you? I also pray as, as we each learn what those costs are, that you'll help teach us to be dependent upon you, that as we learn to give up those things, that you will fulfill us so much more than all of these translucent things that we're actually holding on to in this world. In your son's name we pray. Amen.